Decorator is a useful pattern used to change behavior of a class at runtime without modifying the class itself. In this video, we'll take a look at a simple example of decorating a weapon with different accessories that will change its properties. The first question you probably want to ask me is why would I need to use the decorator pattern? It is true that in most cases there is other way you can solve the problem than using the decorator. In case of the weapons, you could definitely add a boolean that will tell you whether the weapon has a silencer, scope or laser. This would be pretty ugly as you can imagine. The other solution that often comes to mind is inheritance. You would have the class pistol, then class pistol with silencer, another class pistol with silencer and scope. You already see where this is going. Using the decorator, we will wrap the pistol class and add or modify some of its behavior. To understand how this will be done, let's take a look at the diagram. The first element is component, which will be interface or an abstract class, which will be defining functionality of the object you want to decorate. So in our case, this can be I weapon. Then we'll have the concrete components, which will be classes inheriting from the component. In our case, this could be pistol, rifle, shotgun, and so on. Then we have the decorator, which is often called wrapper, which will be abstract class defining what the decorators have to do. In our case, we'll have just a simple weapon decorator. Then we have the concrete decorators, which will be classes inheriting from the decorator, such as scope decorator, silencer decorator, laser decorator, and so on. And the last piece of the puzzle is the client, which will be using the concrete components and will be decorating them with the concrete decorators. Let's start with the iWeapon interface, which right now is pretty simple, it has just one function to shoot. Later we'll also include some weapon data, so that we'll be able to change the maximum ammo, the zoom FOV and all of the other properties. So iWeapon is the component, then we need the concrete component, which in our case will be all of the instances of the weapons. So we also have a pistol, which is inheriting from the iWeapon, and it just has the function to shoot. Next script we need is the decorator, so we have just a simple weapon decorator, which is an abstract class, because we don't really need to create instance of the weapon decorator itself, but we'll be creating instances of let's say the silence decorator, the scope decorator, and so on. The important thing here is that the decorator itself is also extending the iWeapon interface. So let's say that we have the pistol, we wrap it inside of the silencer decorator, then the silencer decorator still has all of the functionality of a weapon. So later, as we have this whole chain of the wrapped objects, so we can have the pistol wrapped inside of a silencer decorator, all of this can be wrapped inside of a scope decorator. What we'll do is that we'll call the shoot function on the scope decorator. This one will go further, it will call the function of the wrapped object, so on the silencer decorator, again that could just adjust some behavior, and the silencer decorator will again call the shoot function of the wrapped object, which will be the pistol in that case. So like this, we'll just go through the whole chain of the decorators until we come to the base object, which can be the pistol or some other weapon. When we wrap some weapon in this decorator, we need to have a reference to it, so that then we can call the shoot function on the wrapped weapon. And the wrapped weapon doesn't necessarily have to be a weapon, it doesn't have to be the pistol, it can be another decorator. For the weapon decorator, we need a constructor into which we'll pass the weapon we have wrapped, then just set it to the variable, and then because it is implementing the interface, we need the shoot function. So now we have a script for the component, the concrete component, and the decorator. So the last thing missing is the concrete decorator. I have created those three more scripts. We have the silencer decorator, the scope decorator, and the laser decorator. All of these are inheriting from the weapon decorator and I have added the constructor which is just taking in the wrapped weapon and calling the constructor in the base class. So when we create the silencer decorator it is still going to call the constructor inside of the weapon decorator and then we can just override the void shoot if we want. So this is the place where you'd be adding some functionality that would be related just to the silencer. And for all the other decorators right now it is the same. We don't have much edit functionality yet. So that you can imagine how all of this is going to work, I have just added simple debug dialogs. So the pistol is going to say shooting a pistol. And then if we add let's say a laser decorator, it should say that the weapon has a laser sight. The same way for the scope and for the silencer as well. 
And to test it, we need the client, which is going to create instances of the decorators and of the components. So for this, I have the pistol controller. So at start, we can just create a simple pistol and call the shoot function on it. And yep, we can see we are shooting a pistol. Now let's try it with the decorators. So we'll wrap the pistol inside of the decorators. So we can say pistol is equal to, and we can just create new instance of one of the decorators. So let's start the silencer decorator. And into it, we need to pass the weapon we are trying to wrap, which could also be a decorator. In this case, we have just the pistol. And then as usual, we can just call the shoot function on the pistol, because the pistol right now is containing the silencer decorator, which is wrapping the pistol. And as we run the game, we can see that we are shooting a pistol and that the weapon has a silencer. So it is running the logic of the pistol itself and then adding some functionality that we have specified in the decorators. And finally, let's try to wrap the decorators inside of decorators. So now the pistol will be fully upgraded. And we can see that it is applying logic of all of the decorators, including the weapon itself. If you want to support me further and gain access to some of the extra content I make, feel free to take a look at my Patreon, where recently I have released an extra video about Extinject. There I will teach you about some advanced features such as game object and project contexts, scriptable object installers, non-mono behavior installers, conditional bindings, and much more. To make it a bit more interesting, we need some data or some logic we can change on the weapon. So I have added a class containing some weapon data, which has the weapon transform that we'll later use to instantiate some bullets. We have a variable for the maximum ammo, for the current ammo, some effective range, the zoom FOV, prefab for the bullet, some shooting sound, and then just a constructor. From now on, each eye weapon will need to have weapon data as well. So we need to modify the pistol, so it is storing the weapon data and inside of the constructor I'm just initializing all of the values. So I'm passing in the pistol transform through the constructor, setting the maximum ammo, the effective range, the zoom FOV and finally loading some sounds and the prefab of the bullet. I've also added a bit more logic inside of the shoot function. So now in the debug.log we are just debugging all of the properties of the pistol. And finally, I'm just playing some sound from an audio player class that I have, which is a singleton. And here it is really nothing complicated, just playing some audio clip. And back in the pistol in the shoot function, I am finally also instantiating the bullet. And so that we can easily change the weapon data from all of the other decorators as well, I will just be sharing the same instance of the class across the pistol and all of the decorators. There are definitely many other ways you could do this, but this one is the most straightforward. So for this, we'll also need to change the weapon decorator a bit, because from now on it needs to be storing the weapon data. When creating the weapon decorator, I'm just getting the weapon data from the wrapped weapon. So then what we can do, let's say in the laser decorator, is that in the constructor we just modify some of the weapon data. So I'm increasing the effective range and decreasing the zoom FOV. Typically, you would be adjusting the data inside of the main function that you have, not in the constructor, but I'm doing it in the constructor because I don't want to increase the effective range each time that we shoot, so you could also have some kind of initialized function for that. And if you would want the laser decorator to somehow alter the shooting behavior of the weapon, you could definitely add some more logic inside of the shoot function. Then we have the scope decorator, inside of which again I'm just changing the effective range and the zoom FOV. And inside of the silencer decorator, I'm just changing the shooting sound, so loading it from the resources folder, and also changing the bullet prefab. But as I said, you could add a bunch more logic inside of the shoot function, or even add some aim function, and so on. Because before we were handling all of the pistol creation logic with the decorators just in the start method, so we couldn't test it really well, I have just moved this inside of the pistol upgrader script, where this one will take care of the buttons, so when we select one of the upgrades, it will add the decorator to the weapon, it is also going to grey out the button, so we cannot click it again, and it is actually going to add the corresponding upgrade to the weapon visual. So the pistol upgrader needs a reference to all of the buttons and to all of the game objects of the upgrades that we have, then I also have the pistol transform, which is just the shooting point where we are going to instantiate the bullet. Then I have a reference to the eye weapon, 
which then we are going to take in the pistol controller when we want to shoot or zoom in the on enable function i'm just creating instance of the pistol and then if we click any of the upgrade buttons i'm just adding listeners to these functions that i have so when we add silencer I'm just setting the weapon to the new silencer decorator and passing in the wrapped object. So the weapon, I'm just setting the silencer object to active so that we can see the visuals change. I'm also changing the color of the upgrade button and just removing the listeners so we cannot click it again. And the same way I'm managing the adding of the scope and the adding of the laser sight. So then we can do some bit more interesting stuff in the pistol controller. So here we just need a reference to the pistol upgrader, so we can grab the weapon from it. We need a reference to the camera that I have, so that we can change the field of view. I also have a boolean, whether we are currently zoomed or not. On the start, I'm just getting the weapon reference from the pistol upgrader. And on update, I'm checking if we are pressing the left ones button. If we are, I'm calling the shoot function on the weapon. If we are pressing the right mouse button and we are zoomed, then we are no longer zoomed, I'm changing the priority to switch the cameras because I'm using sign machine, so if you are interested in making some cool transitions with sign machine, adding some visual effects and much more, then feel free to check my tutorial about sign machine. And then we have a bit more logic for the case when we are not zoomed. So let's take a look at the final result. So if I press the left mouse button, yep, the weapon is shooting, we can see the bullet prefab, we can see some effect and also hear some sound. And in the console we can see that we have 10 maximum ammo, 10 current ammo, 500 effective range and the shooting sound we have selected. Let's try using the silencer which should change the sound and the bullet prefab. So yeah, right now there is no more effects because we are using the silencer and the sound has changed as well. Now let's try zooming in, this works fine. And if we add the scope that we have and try to zoom in again, yep, we can see that we can zoom in a bit more. Still the shooting and that stuff works the same, but in the console we can see that our effective range has increased. Let's now use the final upgrade that we have, which is the laser sight. Here in the distance you can see the laser dot, which is just made using a simple light. And now we should be able to zoom in a bit more. And we should also see that our effective range has again increased. You can see that using the decorator pattern we have been able to create this quite flexible system for the upgrading of the weapon really quickly. Using the decorator pattern you can save yourself quite a lot of time and a lot of code including all of the tons of classes you would need to create just to make those free upgrades work. And there are many more use cases for the decorator pattern such as a card game where you would be applying different effects to each of the cards then you could use the decorators as well. And as always the project files will be on my Patreon for the free members. I hope that I helped you to understand the decorator pattern better, if you have any questions or suggestions Leave them down in the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos, bye!